TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A Jerusalem court overrules a police decision to ban a Jewish man who prayed on the grounds of the Temple Mount, drawing widespread rebuke from the Muslim world. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards claim that its vessels have intercepted a number of U.S. Navy vessels in the Persian Gulf. Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian visits Lebanon, during which he highlights Tehran's intention for Beirut to strengthen bilateral ties in various ways. A Jewish man who was banned from visiting Jerusalem's Temple Mount after police officers supposedly caught him whispering a prayer within the courtyard of the sacred shrine has been partially overruled. The unprecedented ruling by Jerusalem's magistrate court concerned a Jewish man who had been barred from the site for 15 days in breach of the Israel police regulations which opt to enforce the status quo antebellum, Latin for the way it was before the war, during which only Muslims were permitted to worship at the location where both biblical temples once stood. However, after the barred Jewish individual appealed his ban, the Jerusalem Magistrate Court, which is the lowest level of Israel's judiciary, ruled that the man, like many others, prays on a daily basis on the Temple Mount and underlined that the appellant stood in the corner with a friend or two where there was no crowd around him and his prayer was quiet, he evidently whispered. The judge's ruling also noted, quote, I have not found that the religious acts carried out by the appellant were externalized and visible, determining further that such prayer did not violate police instructions. Nevertheless, Israel police is moving to appeal the ruling, arguing that the Jewish man was banned from the Temple Mount on grounds of improper conduct in the public sphere. Meanwhile, Egypt voiced outrage over the Jerusalem court's ruling, calling it an attack on the holy sites that belong exclusively to Muslims. The Egyptian foreign ministry issued a statement calling on the Israeli government not to promote the implementation of the court's ruling on the ground and warned that carrying it out was liable to undermine regional security and stability. Separately, Jordan's Royal Committee for Jerusalem Affairs also rejected the Israeli court's ruling as an attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque and pledged to firmly counter Israeli rulings against the Palestinian people and Jerusalem's sanctities, despite the fact that under Article 9 of the Jordan-Israel Peace Treaty, quote, each party will provide freedom of access to places of religious and historical significance and the parties will act together to promote interfaith relations among the three monotheistic religions with the aim of working towards religious understanding, moral commitment, freedom of religious worship, and tolerance and peace. Turning to the Israeli community of Hulda, where IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi addressed a memorial ceremony of the military's engineering corps, during which he highlighted that while the state of security, which Israel enjoys, may often appear self-evident, in practice, it exists due to relentless efforts of the country's defense forces, which stand guard day and night. של חיילים ומפקדים בכל הגבולות, בכל הממדים, אשר פועלים לילות כימים וממלאים את תפקידו וייעודו של צהל, צבא ההגנה לישראל. General Kochavi continued by highlighting that significant sacrifice of both fallen troops and their families effectively enables Israel to be the wonder which it has become. הכאב שלא מרפה חייב להזכיר לכם גם שזהו חלק ממסע ארוך, ממסע של הגנת העם וחלק מהתנאים שמאפשרים את פיתוח המדינה ושגשוגה. הכאב חייב, חייב להזכיר לכם שמאות אלפי משפחות לא יודעות כאב, לא יודעות כאב, 
בזכותכם, בזכות הבנים והבנות. הן לא יודעות כאב מהסוג שלכן לפחות. בזכותכן ובזכות הבנים והבנות. משפחות אלו, כמו גם שלכן, ממשיכות להתרחב, להתפתח, ומעמידות דורות של אנשים הממלאים את הארץ הזאת לאורכה ולרוחבה, והופכים את מדינת ישראל יום אחר יום, שבוע אחר שבוע, שנה אחר שנה, לפלא. לפלא של שגשוג ולחברה נאורה ומתקדמת, בה יש לכל אדם ביטחון ויכולת הגשמה עצמית. Turning to the Persian Gulf, where Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards claim that its vessels have intercepted a number of U.S. Navy vessels in the strategic waterway. The incident, which occurred at a time when the commander of the United States' Fifth Fleet, Vice Admiral Brad Cooper, visited Israel, was broadcast on Iranian state television, which purported to show small RGC speedboats harassing U.S. naval vessels, while a person speaking in Persian can be heard saying, keep chasing them. It is important to mention that the Iranian report did not provide a specific date to the purported encounter, and a U.S. Navy spokesperson said he was not immediately aware of any such encounter over the past several days. Turning to Washington, where U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price voiced hope that the Iranian definition of soon matches that of the United States, asserting that the stall nuclear talks in Vienna is not a process that can be dragged out. We have heard from the Iranians that uh, they expect negotiations to resume soon. Uh, we hope their definition of soon matches our definition of soon. Uh, we would like to negotiations to resume in Vienna as soon as possible. We have been saying this uh, not for weeks now, but for months now. Uh, we think it is important for the parties to come back together, uh, to continue to resume where we left off uh, in Vienna after the sixth round, uh, so that we can resume uh, this seventh round on the basis of what we have accomplished uh, to date. Uh, we think it is important for a number of reasons, but also because, as we have made very clear, uh, we continue to believe the diplomatic path is open. We continue to believe that a diplomatic approach is the best means to verifiably once again ensure that Iran can never obtain a nuclear weapon uh, with the uh, permanent and verifiable restrictions uh, that the JCPOA put in place. Uh, but we also think a imminent return to Vienna uh, is necessary because this is not a process that can go on indefinitely. Uh, this is not a process uh, that can drag out or that can be dragged out. Uh, we are um, firmly of the belief uh, that we need to work quickly. We need to work with alacrity and a great deal of speed uh, to see to it if we can achieve uh, that mutual return to compliance uh, that we have been sincere and steadfast uh, in seeking to achieve uh, for the better part of a year now. The U.S. State Department spokesman further asserted that despite recent reports on work being done on alternative modalities to thwart Tehran's quest to attain nuclear weapon capabilities, the United States remains convinced that a joint Iran-U.S. recompliance with the 2015 nuclear agreement, or JCPOA, remains the best option forward. So, look, we're uh, not entertaining uh, at the moment, uh, or at least not discussing publicly. Um, other modalities, other alternatives, uh, because we still have a framework in the form of the JCPOA uh, that would provide precisely what we would like to see, precisely what our partners and allies in the P5 plus one would like to see, and uh, what Iran uh, was willing to agree to um, as recently as uh, 2015, implementation in 2016, uh, and certainly uh, the last government in Iran uh, being willing to engage uh, in good faith, business-like, indirect, but business-like negotiations uh, in Vienna. That's what we would like to see happen, to see if we can affect that mutual return to compliance. Meanwhile, in Lebanon, Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian has made his first official visit during which he held a number of meetings with senior Lebanese officials and members of Tehran's proxy in the country, Hezbollah. Following one of his meetings, the Iranian top diplomat voiced the Islamic Republic's readiness 
to build two power plants in Lebanon within a period of 18 months, which would then help the country re-emerge from a state of near collapse. شرکت‌های بزرگ ایرانی آمادگی دارند دو نیروگاه یک هزار مگاواتی برق در بیروت و در جنوب لبنان در کمتر از 18 ماه ایجاد کنند. Minister Amir Abdullahian, whose country effectively holds Lebanon hostage by means of its internationally recognized terror proxy Hezbollah, further highlighted Tehran's intention for Beirut to strengthen bilateral ties in various ways, claiming it to be as part of a mutual agreement. He also mentioned the importance of Hezbollah as an armed force for the purpose of deterring Israel. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to once again lift Lebanon up in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.